Hi right, guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We got Sam with us today. Alan. And we're going rocky bashing. We could catch some other species. We got some leftover ragworms, so we don't want that going to waste because it's an expensive bait. And hopefully, we can catch some decent fish. So stay tuned to Smash Fishing. Woo! Yeah. Look at the size of that one. <laughs> That's a beast. First drop as well. Nice one. Look at that. Come here, big mama. Check that one out, guys. First drop. And we were just about to talk about the rigs and stuff, and I thought, oh, I'll have a little drop. And there you go. God, it's hot today, eh, mate? Ridiculous Couldn't even hot. keep the hat on. There you go, guys. Look at that. Beautiful little fish there. What did you give that? Two and a half pound? Yeah, nice one. Nice size wrasse. We get the hook out, get you a better show, and we get her released. What a cracker for a start. There you go, guys. Lovely little wrasse there. Really full belly on that one. So we'll quickly chock her back. We don't want to keep it out of the water for long. Let's we'll see if we can get a big grandma. <laughs> Beautiful, let's go get some more. We only had the one rocky at this spot. We had no bites since, eh, mate? No. It's quite surprising. So we're gonna head off to a little shallow mark around the corner where there's a big boulder bed and usually there's wrasse there. So fingers crossed we get some. The rig I'm using today is just a small dropper loop. Don't know if you can see that very well. Size two hook. And then at the bottom, we've just got a little one ounce weight. And that is all we're using today. Nothing complicated. And we've just got a little bag of ragworm that Sam's got. And then that's how you catch the wrasse. And in the spot we're heading to, a friend of mine had a place there once. So you never know really what's going to come up. You could even catch a gilthead. There you go, guys. That's a ragworm. Little teethy critters. Size two hook. And all you do, start at the head and literally just thread the worm on. And because we're fishing very close, we can leave a nice little tail there to give a little bit of wiggle and hopefully attract something cool. What we're using on the first rods, guys, we've changed spot because there was a lot of people in the other one at the lighthouse. So we're fishing like fairly snaggy ground but there's a lot of sand mixed in between so we've got the up and overs on and we're going to throw a few squid out and uh, how we like to bait them is starting at the top get your hook in back out in the same hole and you go in and back out and then you go in the same hole down and then out the head then if you pull this tight it all comes pretty streamlined and what you got is a good old bait elastic and you can just bind it onto the hook don't need a lot of it because squid's quite a tough bait so it does last a fairly long time beautiful we got a lot of hook exposure there and you bring your panel hook down quite a windy day today as well so recording's going to be a bit difficult now you got your panel hook one two three in the bait and back out pull that a little bit tight and that there will catch pretty much anything we're mainly going for congas today but we could catch bullhorse ray you name it so we're going to bang this one out and i'll show you the next rig on the other rig all we've got is a freeway swivel i think these are size 1.0 and they hold a ton of weight you'll never snap them and you've got 150 pound trays we like to use 150 or above for congas because they can chafe through it pretty quickly then we got an Ato mustard hook and then half a mackerel on there. Plenty of plenty of juices come out of this. This is why I like the head section. You like the tail, eh? Yeah, I'll see you've if had a lot more of, in them. You've had a lot of success with it. Eh? Yeah. So yeah, we've got all the juices there. Make sure there's lots of guts in your mackerel and that'll bring them in from a very long way away. Congas are like bloodhounds when it comes to blood. So uh, fingers crossed we can get them tonight. That's both rods out now. Got half a mackerel on this one and a whole squid on this one. Fingers crossed, we can pluck something out of it. Got a fixed ball on this rod today because the other reel's line is all frayed up and uh, that's the last thing you want if you're fishing for big fish. So I changed it up to this one and this one should be more than that adequate to pull up a big conger if we get one. Fingers crossed and we've got the good old fathoms. Oh, this looks big. 
Feels like a good fish. Yeah. Feels like it. Giving a few head knocks there. It's giving a good bang. Come on. Big conga. Yeah. <laughs> it's not feeling so big now. Might be swimming towards I you. Must have been pulling it out the weed. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Go have some good head bangs at the start, eh? Yeah. Flip it. Yeah, I'll flip it. You ready, boss? Yeah, I'm ready. First conga of conga wall. There we go. Your little beauty. Nice one, mate. Lovely job. First fish of the night. I had to pull it out of the rough then. That's a lovely eel. Nicely hooked as well. We'll get him unhooked. We'll get you a better show, guys. Hell yeah. Beautiful. She's off. Ah, oh, nice start to the night, eh, mate? Yeah, definitely. First conga of conga wars, baby. Nice little eel there. Nothing huge, but gave a good account of himself at the start. He was proper swimming backwards, eh? Yeah, definitely. Good head knocks. We're going to quickly throw him back now. He's not big enough to keep. That's just a cracking little fish. Really pleased with that. Let's get her back. Beautiful. Let's go get some more. That last conga fell to a squid wrap. And that's what it looks like. It's just a whole squid on the panel hooks on the up and over. Ideal that. This one's bombed out a long way. And uh, I've had a few recent bites on this rod. And hopefully it's an eel. But if I catch one, I'm going to have to pull it out of the boulder bed we got underneath. So it's going to be a 50 50 if I can catch a fish. If I catch a fish here, guys, I'm gonna have to really pull. <laughs> Thing with where we are, we've got a defense wall with boulders all over the place. And I've cast my line right on the end of the boulders. And uh, I just had a really good slam over then. I'm gonna leave it sit for a minute. And if it comes back, well, it's gonna be chaos, I can promise you that much. Hell yeah. Old Rupert the Conga's back been playing with me for a while this one <laughs> we've named him Rupert what I'm doing is I'm just letting the conga feed on it quite a big bait I've got on usually a giant conga will just just swallow it but these little ones just chew on the end and spin. So it, make, it makes your rod do this. And it does look like you're getting a lot of bites and the fish on, but a lot of time there's not. So it's best to just wait it out. And when the, when the conga pulls your rod over slowly, you just lift slowly into it. And when you feel it on tugging, that's when you give it all hell. Fish on. That's old Rupert. Old Rupert. That's old Rupert. Give him some stick. Yeah. Get him out of those boulders. Yeah. There he is. Oh, he's off. Is no, he he's off? not. He's still, there. he's still there. That's old Rupert. Come here, Rupert. Yeah, Rupert. Whee. <laughs> there you go, guys. Second conga of the night. Still another whip, but hey ho, we managed to get him. And this is what I mean is uh, congas like this, they just nip at the bait. And as you can see, it just takes all the bottom off, all the blood out the bait, and a big one usually will take it. So it's best just to wait a little bit for all the little taps to go, wait for the rod to go over, and then when you lift in, you'll know if he's on. He's hooked really well, this conga. Let's take these off the hook, guys. You've got your disgorger here. It's just a piece of bar. And if you get it side on on the hook, pull your line down as tight as you can. Just like that, as tight as you can. Give it a little wiggle. And there we go. That's the fish off the hook. We can get her back. Another lovely little eel there. 
causing havoc. <laughs> There we go. There you go. Another conga eel down. Hopefully we can get his grandma. Goodbye, Rupert. Another conga of the night guys, straight down the side of the rocks, there we go, not a monster, another whip, that's a fine little specimen that, hey look at the lateral line on that, it's really pronounced, look at that, that's the lateral line, picks up vibrations in the water for bait fish, what a brilliant creature, we'll get him unhooked, get you a better show and we'll get him back, lovely little eel that one, look at that, it just fell out, <laughs> This fish was, it wasn't even hooked. The bait was lodged in its mouth. <laughs> and that's why it's so lively. What a beauty. The thing with congas is don't try and grab them. If you just cradle them like that, and a lot of the time, they would just stay still. So there you go, guys. Another conga. What do you reckon? That's probably the biggest of the night. Not by a lot. But not a bad eel all the same, eh, mate? Yeah, definitely. Lovely job. Oh, there we go. And he's off. Nearly. Snappy little pup. Right. There you go, guys. Last show of the eel. Ooh, stay there. Stay, 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 stay. Last show of the eel there. They're all about average, these eels, but fun to catch nonetheless. Come on, let's go get some more. We Hopefully, we get grandma this time. Happy with that so far. Three congas down. No monsters by any means, but fun to catch nonetheless. And I've really got to heave them out down here because I am literally right on the boulder bed, which is a, is a big sea defense of boulders. So if you let the fish swim into them, then uh, you will never get it out. So you've got to heave them up at least till you get them to, to the surface and you can sort them out from there. <laughs> I got the baby. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Absolute whip. <laughs> Went slow for a bit though, eh, mate? Yeah, didn't even know you had it on, eh? Yeah, same. Look at that, perfect. Look how dark that eel is. Really jet black. You can tell that's been in the kelp. So we'll get him on hook quick and we'll get you a better show, guys. So there you go, guys. One monster. <laughs> <laughs> Love a perfect miniature eel. Nothing special, but glad we caught it. It's been a bit slow for the last hour. But hey ho, we're still pursuing. Fingers crossed we can get a couple more. Let's get her back. Lovely little wheel. That's straight off. Haha, <laughs> let's go get some more. You got one, mate. I finally caught one. <laughs> Sal's got a nice little whip there. <laughs> the tide's gone down quite a lot and the bites have just stopped, eh? Yeah, they haven't been too consistent, eh? No, nah, that's it. We're waiting on that monster. <laughs> Oh well, nice to see a fish nonetheless though, buddy. Yeah, definitely. We get the pliers out, we get him unhooked, we get him released. Cracking little wheel. The Sam's little wheel. Just about to go back. What a whopper that is, mate. <laughs> it's a beauty, eh? <laughs> Go on then, big lob. <laughs> Beautiful. She's straight back. <laughs> 